Good teachers are always looking for exciting ways to inspire their students. And new tech is giving them more options than ever before. Take 3D printing. It's been used by doctors, engineers, artists, even astronauts. And now it's being used in classrooms. History professor Susanna Lee recently gave me a tour of a 3D printing facility, what's known as a maker's space at North Carolina State University. What can you do with a maker space that you can't do in a regular classroom? Well, I think the wonderful thing about a space like the maker space is that it uh, enables students to really engage their creativity. So a lot of the, the skills that we're working on with students for a long time were really focused on critical thinking skills. And so now we're trying to um, in incorporate both critical thinking skills and creativity. This is happening all over the world all the way from grade school through college. As 3D printing tech gets cheaper and more available, teachers and students alike are realizing that actually making things that relate to their coursework is an ideal way for people to learn. Having the 3D printer in the classroom has greatly increased the creativity of the students. Many students who before, when given an assignment, would do the bare minimum are now really paying attention to the details so that when they get to print it out, they can see their hard work having a physical realization. 3D printing tech has all sorts of advantages. Not only does it let students dig in and make stuff, it allows them to interact with history in ways that books and pictures just can't do. Take these baby shoes handmade in leather by an enslaved African-American more than a century ago. They're delicate and need to be protected. If they get handled too much, they'll get damaged. So why not make a copy with a 3D printer? Can you tell me why this makerspace is valuable to the study of those shoes for students? Well, what we're trying to do at the museum is come up with a way for students much more interesting if you can touch the things and uh, at the museum most things are going to be behind glass uh, or in our cases where you can't really get the feel and, and understand what they were like so an artifact like this ancient arrowhead can be recreated exactly like the original it's measured scanned and recreated on a computer before being sent to the printer a few hours later students have a copy in their hands and museums can have an exact replica that they can reproduce as often as they like. Things do degrade over time. It's, it's happening naturally, you know, at, and so our job is to try to protect things as best we can. But, you know, eventually, time's going to win. Uh, so one thing we like about this is it does, it does perf perform some documentation. Of course, there's nothing like the original. But these 3D facsimiles are providing options for both museum curators and especially students that didn't exist as recently as a decade ago. Can you learn things by making something that you wouldn't learn the normal way? I think so, because it's an opportunity to think through a lot of problems that you wouldn't ordinarily think through or that you wouldn't really encounter. Students are very accustomed to writing papers, but it's harder to build something from scratch. It's an unfamiliar experience. Major museums from Boston to Beijing are turning to 3D printing to reproduce their entire collections. In the past, they used photographs to do this, but no matter how good the picture, it's still two-dimensional and flat. By 2050, a lot of the world's historical artifacts will have three-dimensional replicas that can be printed with the press of a button. It's a way of sharing our cultural history with people who may not ever be able to visit a museum halfway around the world, but they could print something at home and have a replica of what they're not able to even go and see in person, but something different than just looking at an image of it. So by 2050, we'll be able to 3D scan and print something in color with full function in seconds we might not go to the store for a piece of hardware we the store might be a corner of our house where we just download whatever we want and print it so by 2050 what is the 3d printing going to be like we won't even call it that will 3d scan and print in full color with full function without even thinking about it